Myself Arjun Balian, Assistant Professor, Electrical Department, A.K. GEC. So today we will be discussing about the topic in the power systems that is the basics of power systems. So the subject code is KWD 501. So in this we will be discussing about the single line diagram and the different topics of what will be the uh, what is there to cover the basics in the power system that is how the sending and voltage is uh, why it has to be kept higher what is the generation what is the transmission and what will be the distribution. So basically if I talk about the power system it consists of a three parts and it can be termed as the generation, transmission and the distribution. So this is generation, transmission and the distribution. So generation part if we if I talk about it is uh, the part where we electricity is generated. For example for generation of electricity we are using the thermal power plant. So thermal power plant is using this for example we are using the there are NTPCs there, hydroelectric power plant are there, so they are at the generation end. After that we are going to the transmission part. So in the transmission part we are using the lines with, uh, that are of 11 kV, 22 kV, 132 kV and right now we are going for example 765 kV AC. So these are the lines uh, for the transmission that are we are using. We are going for the AC as well as, as for the DC transmission lines. Now after then the third important part that comes in the power system is the distribution. So this is the distribution that we are concerned about. For example, if the electricity is generated at the power plant, so at the distribution end, uh, for example, if we are living in some locality, so at the distribution end, how much is the power that is, uh, how much is the voltage that has to be stepped down. For example, in the generation, we are using at the generation end, we are using the power to be step, the voltage we are generated, we are doing the step up of the voltage at the generation end. So we are using the step up transformer here at the generation end. So what we do at the generation part, we use the step up transformer to step up the voltage. And what is the advantage of doing that, uh, increasing the voltage that will be discussed and that is the important concept of the power systems that why the voltage has to be stepped up. So there are basically different important aspects that has to be or there are different points that we will drive and we will see how if the voltage is kept higher and what is the advantage in the transmission line or how we can reduce the losses in the transmission line. So what are the objectives of power system? So talking about the basics what I have told you in the starting what are the objectives of power system? So cost of electricity should be minimum. So this is the first point. Cost of electricity should be minimum. Whatever the electricity we are generating, for example, if the consumer and if we are thinking about, if somebody, if you are asked to some of the consumer that what, what you expect from the electricity department or from the government if in view of electricity, what you expect. So you will expect that the cost of elect electricity must be, it must be minimum. It does not mean that if the uh, cost of one unit is 5 rupees, then you want it to be 2 or 3. You want the cost to be minimum because you don't want to pay higher amount. So the cost of the electricity should be minimum. Power must be available all the time. From the consumer uh, side, if I expect, if I am a consumer, then I will expect that the power should be available all the time. It must not happen that the power is available only 10 to 12 hours per day. Or if I say that the power is available only 5 to 6 hours or 8 to 10 hours or, or if you say in a better condition, if you say the power is available for 20 hours, then it is also not expected. We want the electricity to be available 24 hours a day. So this is our requirement. Next, generation should not be affected. What is the next point? The generation should not be affected for the faults and should continuously produce power. So this must not happen if the fault is occurring in the system. If you say there are different types of faults that will be occurring in the power systems, for example, LG fault, double line to ground fault and uh, three phase fault. <coughs> so if I will talk about these three types of faults, if any of the fault is occurring in the transmission line, then it does not 
or it must not occur then the electricity will be gone that, that such type of case must not occur even if the fault is occurring in the system we want the continuity of the power because at the consumer end it is not our concern where the where the fault is occurring and how the fault will be removed from the system that is not our concern what we want that the even there is a fault in the system the power must be continuous so this is the requirement from our side so revising the basic of the power systems what we expect is cost of electricity should be minimum whatever we are generating we must pay or whatever government is generating we are not bothered about it we want to pay a minimum amount apart from this power must be available at all the times that i have already explained you power must be available at all the times it must not happen for 10 12 15 hours the electricity is there and third important point if somebody ask you what do you expect what are your objectives what do you expect that the even the fault is occurring in the system whatever the fault is there then the power should be continuously the power production must be there so these are the basic objectives of the power system going to the next going to the next slide what is a single line diagram so that is the point that i want to discuss here in the basic single line diagram so there are three parts that i want to tell you this is the generation part or i will write it as g <coughs> so instead of writing the complete generation i am writing as g because there the power will be generated for any power plant such as hydro or thermal whatever you are using to generate the electricity and then there comes the transmission part the transmission part that i have already discussed you that in the transmission part were the, the 11 kv line 22 kv line 765 kv whatever the transmission line voltage you are preferring that comes the transmission part and there comes the at the last it comes the distribution so in the last part it comes the distribution where the voltage has to be distributed so these are basically you can say we are the consumer share so we are the consumer here now a single line diagram is representation that now what is the basic concept of a single line diagram single line diagram basically explain that the original power system network what we are talking about that the original power system network is a three phase and whatever we are calculation we are doing is that for the three phase but in originality we are doing the calculation for the single phase in the basic or in the simple language if i will explain is that we are doing the calculation for the single phase system but we will explain or we will claim that we have done the analysis for the three phase system that why it is occurring that we are doing why we are claiming that we are uh, doing the analysis for the single phase but we are claiming that we have done the analysis for the three phase that is only because of the condition balance condition when the system is balanced that means all the three phases r by p r y b their magnitude will be equal and they will be 120 degree phase apart so if you have done the analysis for any of the phase if for any of the phase you have done the analysis you can always claim that you have done the analysis for the three phase system because the rest two phases are 120 degree apart and their magnitude is equal so just doing the analysis for a single phase we can claim that the analysis has been done for the three phase so this is the advantage of single line diagram and it is mostly preferred it is always now it is only preferred in the power system just to make the calculation easier now going to the next slide what are the elements of a single line diagram so out of the different elements that are that was there in the synchronous that was there in the single line diagram first is synchronous machine so it is an electrical machine whose rotating speed what you can say about the synchronous machine is is speed is 120 fyp that you can you will be studying in detail in the synchronous machines so what what in the uh, sh short if i want to explain is that is speed is proportional to the frequency of the alternating current frequency of the alternating current it is independent of the load so what is p p is the number of poles and f is the frequency normally we take it as 50 hertz 
so normally we take it as 50 yards now note these are the important point note why we are going for the three phase system because uh, uh, previously the single phase system that was occurring in the uh, single phase uh, power was there in the system then we go to the three phase power why because it is more economical and it is transmitted and distributed in a easy way so this is the important concept of a three phase it is transmitted and it is distributed more economically also for the same size if i am taking talking about the same size of the machine then the three phase machine is 1 point gives 1.5 times output than the single phase machine so from the objective point of view or from the interview point of view you must keep it in mind that for the three phase power is transmitted and distributed more economically if you want to uh, transmit the same power with the help of a single phase then it will be more costly because the three phase that is the advantage of a three phase it is more economical the same power you want to transmit from the three phase it will give you a it is least expensive now for the and from the same size if i am talking about the size then it will give 1.5 from the same size of the machine is there suppose single phase and three phase but the pow power output is here 1.5 times that of a single machine going to the next slide the transformers so talking about the second part in the single line diagram i am just covering about the basic parts of the single line diagram then in the next you know, slide so we will uh, cover a numerical on the single line diagram so what are transformer transformer that you must have been gone through there are two types of transformer step up and step down transformer so what is step up transformer so as i have already explained you in the single line diagram suppose this is generation and this is transformer t1 so this is a step up suppose 11 to 22 so this is a step up transformer that is will be there at the generation end similarly if i will talk about the distribution end then it consists of a step down transformer so distribution end it will be a step down transformer because we don't want if for example if the step up we are going to the 765 kv then it then this much higher voltage is not required by the consumer this is the basic concept what consumer wants at the suppose this is a consumer it wants 220 or 440 and volt not kilovolt so this is the difference 220 or 440 but what we are generating the power we are generating the power and we are going at going it stepping up the voltage is up to the 765 or up to the 220 volt but that much is not required by the consumer end so hence this is at the so hence i want to wanted to explain at the generation end we use the step up and at the distribution end we use the step down transformer now comes the third concept of bus bar so what is bus bar after synchronous machine and transformer bus bar is what it is an electrical junction in which all the incoming and outgoing currents meet at a single point suppose you can understand it easily by using the bus bar you can say suppose this is a junction incoming current and these are the outgoing current this is incoming and this is the outgoing so incoming current outgoing current so this gives the basic concept of junction so in the power system it is uh, defined as a group of conductors used for collecting the electrical power from the incoming feeder and distributing them to the outgoing feeder so it is just a from the if you have the basic concept of electrical engineering then you will just accept it as a point case here where the incoming current is there and the outgoing current is there so in the power system electric power coming to the incoming feeder and going out to the outgoing feeder that is the basic concept of a bus bar so going to the next slide this is the transmission part so what the power transmitted transferred from generation station to the load centers so this is a generator if i will if i will talk you to draw the single line diagram this is a generator this is a circuit breaker the basic concept of circuit breaker is that uh, it will sense uh, it, basically it will not sense the relay will sense and it will make the circuit breaker on and off 
So relay will sense the whether the value of current is higher than the particular set limit. For example, if the value of current is 1.5 ampere, if you let suppose, and if the current value exceeds this much amount of current, then the relay will sense that a high amount of current will be flowing in the transmission line, and it will make the circuit breaker off. So just just it is used for the protection purpose. Now, why the high amount of current? the circuit breaker will turn off that question can come to your mind but this is there is a basic concept if a high amount of current will flow in the circuit suppose so it will be i square r so i square r so if the higher amount of current will be flowing in the circuit the losses will be more because i square r it is proportional to so as much i square r as much losses okay then comes the step up transformer that i have explained you it is used to step up the voltages then the circuit breaker is used for the security or safety purpose then comes the step down transformer step down transformer again i have explained you that at the consumer end or at the load end what we want we want the voltage to be 220 or 440 volt so step down transformer used to step down the voltage then comes the bus bar and then comes the load so there are different types of ter terminologies so whether p and q are known p and delta are known what whether uh, delta is unknown so that types of different load buses are there so it is a generator bus whether it is a pv bus pq bus so different terminologies are there that you will study in the power systems too what type of load are there what types of buses are there so this is a basic flow chart of the single line diagram now there is an equation that gives you an overview that how the sending and voltage if i kept higher then what will be the transmission line losses will be there in the system so it will give you a brief idea so that is a pr that equation very important for power system point of view most of your concepts will be clear by this equation so pr is vs vr by x sin delta i will explain you what is vs vs is the sending end voltage vr is the receiving end voltage vs is the sending end voltage vr is the receiving end voltage x is the reactance of the transmission line so transmission line reactance and sin delta delta is what delta is the load angle that is the load angle so that basic concept of load angle you will study in the power system what is the load angle or in the synchronous machine if you will read the synchronous machine you will study in detail how the load angle affects that is delta now some important points about this single line diagram sending and active power is increased by increasing the vs what is this if i want to increase the sending and active power that is i already explained pr is vs dot vr xs sin delta so this is the power so how we can increase this power by increasing the vs that is a basic concept pr is directly proportional to vs you can see from this equation so if you increase the vs then the pair receiving and power will be also increased so first point is clear it can also be increased how the receiving and power can be increased basically what we are concerned about that whatever the power we are generating at the sending end the same amount of power must reach the consumer it does not mean that we are generated generating 200 megawatt and at the load end you are only getting 80 megawatt that is not the or it must not occur in the system if you are generating 200 megawatt then 200 megawatt power must reach to the consumer why there is losses in the system so that must not occur so again to increase the receiving end power we have to reduce the x reactance so you can see as you decrease the re x the receiving in power will be increased 
what happens as you decrease the x because it is inversely proportional to pr so as the x is decreased the receiving end power will be increased ps is increased by increasing the delta so this is the third point ps is increased by increasing the delta that is you know directly proportional this is delta and this is pr so if delta is increased then the pr will be also increased again if the vs or vr is increased then the pr will be increased and again if the x is reduced then the ps is also increased so there are different factors on which the power transfer capability of the power system depends so talking about the first point advantage of increasing the vs power transfer capability increases what is pr it is directly proportional to vs square so vs is what is the sending and voltage so if i remove the proportionality sign then pr2 by pr1 is vs2 square by vs1 square so from the equation also it is clear if the sending and voltage is increased that i am telling you again and again if the sending and voltage is increased then the receiving and power will be increased and how it will be increased if i take the sending and voltage to 11 to 222 3 to 233 to 132 to 220 to 765 as the voltage is getting increased the receiving end power will be increased and the pr will be increased simple concept because the receiving end power is directly proportional to voltage square now transmission line losses reduces talking about this point how the transmission line losses reduces so if this is a trans uh, this is a line having resistance r current i so power will be vi cos pi power is equal to vi cos pi so this is the power vi cos pi so if i'll write i i will write it as p by v cos phi so what is the power loss power loss i have already explained you it is i square r it is what i square r so if pl what i will write i will replace that i into i will put that i here i will put that right here so pl is p square r by v square cos square phi assuming p r cos phi to be constant so what relation i am able to obtain from here i am simply able to obtain that pl is is equal to 1 upon v square so this is the concept of increasing the sending end voltage what is there that if i kept the voltage to be higher that first first point i have explained you if i kept the voltage to be higher then the receiving end power was increased and again if i increase the voltage then you have you are able to see in this second point that if the voltage is increased as the transmission line losses is reduced so two uh important points that you are able to derive from here that we have to keep the voltage to be higher to in reduce the losses and to get the maximum power at the receiving end now going to the next area volume of cross section of conductors so what is that so r is equal to rho l upon a you equation this equation you know so what you can write from here a is equal to rho l upon r so replacing it r is equal to rho l v square cos square by p square so what we are able to obtain a to be area of a cross section of a conductor is rho l dot p square by p l b square cos square phi so this is the equation that i am able to obtain when i am talking about the area of cross section of the conductor so again from this equation i can write a to be inversely proportional to v square another advantage what is that that as the voltage is increased sending and voltage then the area of cross section required is less so that is the important point or that we are concerned about as the voltage is increased because what we want we want the system to be economical we don't want the, because if the area of cross section is less then the size of the conductor required will be less so it is more economical so 
even uh, the transmission line voltage when we are reducing then what what transmission line voltage we are increase what we are able to do we are able to increase the receiving end power we are able to reduce the transmission line losses and we are able to decrease the area for cross section of the conductor so these are the three important points that we are able to obtain by increasing the sending end voltage so therefore due to this advantages of power system we are now increasing the voltage from 11 33 to 20 400 765 kb we are increasing the voltages 11 to 33 to 132 to 220 to 400 to 765 that is the basic advantage now that another concept that is there is the resistance so what is this resistance that you will study in in detail in the next slide that rac is equal to 1.5 times rdc so resistance of ac will be greater than dc resistance and that is what it is because of the skin effect so what happens due to the skin effect the accumulation of flux is there or what where the flux linkage increases due to which what happens there is accumulation of flux at one point due to which the current is decreased at the center and most of the it is current is accumulated at the surface of the conductor hence we call that rac is greater than rdc and what is the resistivity of conductor what it this is the important point from the numerical point of view that how the resistivity of a conductor varies with temperature it is given by this equation that we will see how while solving the numerical how this resistivity of conductor will vary so it is the uh, rac is 1.5 time rdc that is skin effect and that we will be studying in the next slide. Thank you.